So again, I welcome you all, and I'm going to invite our Minister of Discipleship, Gail McLaughlin, to share a few announcements. Good morning. Good morning. A big thank you to everybody who helped with Trunk or Treat, whether you decorated a trunk, donated candy, made goodie bags, made cotton candy, invited friends, or just came to hang out. It took a lot of effort from a lot of people to make it a success, and we appreciate it. So thank you very much. Also, a thank you to everyone who has donated crayons or molds to the 5th to 8th grade Sunday School. They are well underway with their peeling of crayons and will continue making their new crayons out of old crayons. For any of those children who would like to take a mold and some crayons home, you can do that because we have lots of crayons to be made. So just check with me afterwards and we'll get you a mold. Save the date for November 27th for Advent Workshop. We have one of the craft samples hanging on the bulletin board, so check it out on your way out to um, coffee hour. And then lastly, Christmas in a Box is returning. If you remember from last year, or if you are new this year and did not participate in that, it is when we partner with the food pantry and we fill a box with things to make Christmas a little bit more fun and a little bit simpler. So wrapping paper, gift bags, hot chocolate, maybe a Christmas-themed book or a fuzzy blanket, anything that you would like to do to make Christmas a little bit more fun for some of the families in North Reading who need a little bit of help. So you can start thinking about that and getting that ready, and that will be due back the first Sunday of December. Thank you. So a few additional announcements. Uh, first of all, the altar flowers this morning are given in memory of Lester Minerva Hudgens and Irving and Elizabeth Kingman by Jack and Jane Hudgens. There we go. Uh, that's right, there isn't a picture for them, but there is a picture of David and Lisa Burke and uh, the Coupler is being lit this coming week in loving memory of them. I also thank Patrick for serving as our tech person this morning. And following the service, everyone is invited to remain up in Fellowship Hall for uh, refreshments and fellowship. I know that there are a few additional announcements from various members of the congregation, and I am going to start by calling on, I believe it was Alicia McGoldrick who said she had an announcement for Frosty's Fair. Good morning. Good morning. Believe it or not, fair is fewer than four weeks away, and so wreaths can be ordered. The uh, order worksheet is in the Hilltop News and also in the FAIR email that goes out weekly. We're still looking for a few volunteers and we'll take whatever time or talent you have to offer. Um, specifically, we need people to help with Wednesday and Thursday set up, laying down the rug, helping set up the toy room. We do need a Santa for Saturday for Selfies with Santa. We need a cashier for the Saturday Cafe and we need someone to help at the food to go table. And of course, we're always looking for donations. Check the weekly email, the sign up in Fellowship Hall, or find me at coffee hour for more information. Thank you. I'm also going to call on Patrick Clerken, who is the chairperson of the house ministry. He has an announcement and is He's making his way over because we are celebrating communion this morning. We will be passing the peace, and you can either shake hands with each other. If you are not comfortable doing that, all you need to do is put your hands across your chest and say, peace be with you. Good morning. Good morning. This is an announcement shorter than the trip to the lectern. So um, as Rick mentioned before, it's a house ministry announcement. Uh, next weekend is a cleanup day, fall cleanup day. It happens every year. Basically, volunteers, anyone that can uh, donate a couple hours, it starts at 9 in the morning. We're cleaning the, um, uh, all the leaves around the property. 
it kind of changes every year depending on where they end up and who picks it up, but it's the same gist. If, if you have um, a leaf blower or some type of uh, additional rakes that you can bring along, uh, as well as volunteering, that would be much appreciated, but we do have rakes here as well. So uh, once again, that will be next Saturday at 9 a.m. Thank you. And also, I want to take a moment and offer a special thank you to Betsy Rowland, who is filling in at the last minute for uh, Nancy Thorne, who is having some back problems. So we thank Betsy for being here to help out this morning. And I'm also going to call on Dee Canal, who has an announcement on behalf of the Outreach Ministry. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Dee Cannell. I guess most of you know me, but um, I'm on the outreach ministry, and we have a few drives going on right now. This is starting our busy time of year. Um, one is Treats for Troops, which uh, is continuing on through next weekend. So if you have leftover Halloween candy, we do have a box in Fellowship Hall. You can bring it in. Uh, we will be collecting through next weekend. So. Um, and that will be going to Treats for Troops and also to one of our own congregation members, Rory Stimson, who is serving in Qatar right, right now. Um, also, we have Blanket Sunday going on. You may have seen that as you came in. Uh, there's a table in Putnam Hall. And this is uh, something we do every year for um, Christian uh, World Service. They donate blankets to disaster relief around the world. Um, locally here in the U.S. and also overseas. And um, for $10, you can donate one blanket to that cause, and that will enable them to serve more people in disaster relief. And also, I have a very special announcement today. Um, We're going to call Stacy DiCarlo up. Okay. <laughs> It, <laughs> this is a surprise announcement, I guess. <laughs> anyway, um, today is a special service related to the food pantry and our connection with the food pantry and all the great work that um, they do. And I just want to uh, let you know that uh, Union Congregational Church is donating $2,480 to the food pantry today as part of our connection. So. <laughs> Thank you. So we'll find out more about the food pantry in a few minutes. And as Steve mentioned, this is a food pantry Sunday, and Stacy and Ellen Wiklansky will be doing a dialogue to serve with me in just a bit. And are there any other announcements? If not, then let us draw near to God's throne of grace and rejoice in the love that is from everlasting to everlasting. to worship. We are a people who have been called to dream with God. Called to dream of a day when the lion will lie down the land. 
a day when all are loved as fully as God loves us. To have faith is to dream with God. And to know that with God all things are possible. confession. God of blessings, great and small, you call to us from breathtaking sunsets and cluttered desks and crowded highways, and yet we sometimes hesitate to walk with you because we know it will mean letting go of the worries that make it hard to trust others, the wounds that we cling to because we don't want to forgive the mistakes that make it hard to love ourselves, the pride that makes it hard to love the least among us. Come to us now, Holy One, and set us free from the sins that cripple us, so that we may once again walk with you along the path that will lead us home to the peace that passes all understanding. This we ask, as disciples of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. People of God, hear the good news. If anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. Let us rejoice and be glad, for in Jesus Christ there is forgiveness of sins and fullness of life. And eternal life is in which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto him. Amen. I invite you to pass the peace of God with one another.
be seated. It is a joy to come together and to be here in God's house where we have answered the call to follow the risen Christ. Let us be a people of faith who serve him not only in words, but also in deeds of loving kindness. Let us come now to God's altar with our tithes and our offerings.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. God, whose glory fills the heavens and whose grace has touched my heart, I come to your altar this day to praise you for all of my blessings. Along with my humble gratitude, I also bring you this offering and pray that it will give birth to a bountiful harvest full of deeds of loving kindness. This I pray in the name of the risen Christ, who has called us to follow him. Amen. Please be seated. Please join me in the responsive call to prayer. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. Good people, let us enter now into this time of stillness that we might be one with our God. My friends, are there joys, concerns, prayers that you would like to lift up to the Lord this day? Yes, David. And what was her name again? Sarita. Sarita. So we ask God to be with David's friend Sarita, who is flying to India for four weeks to celebrate a wedding. And we ask safe travels for her. Lord, in your goodness. We also lift up in prayer Nancy Thorne and was sorry to hear that she had some back issues this morning. We ask that God's healing be upon her. Lord, in your goodness. I also lift up in gratitude our Minister of Discipleship, also the Reverend Elva Mary Paul, who preached last Sunday while I was away. And it was a joy to be able to be away and know that the service would go on. And I am thankful for that. Lord, in your goodness. 
We continue to lift up in prayer Kay Kim Bauer. As many of you know, she has been diagnosed with bilateral breast cancer and will be undergoing treatments. We ask God's healing and strength to be upon her. Lord, in your goodness. And Nick Vontalidis' mom, who is recovering from knee replacement, and we ask God's healing with her. Lord, in your goodness. Are there any other prayer requests? If not, oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm still on ship's time. <laughs> yes. Um, Jillian just moved up to um, Woodstock, Vermont, and she's on her own for the first time. She does a nine month internship. So just a nine month internship up in Woodstock, from Woodstock Vermont. Vermont. Yeah. No, first, no. first time on her first own. First time on her own. So are we praying for her or are we praying for mom? <laughs> Both. <laughs> we ask God's blessing to be upon Jillian as she begins this new chapter in her life. And we also pray for Melissa and God's grace to be with you as well. Lord, in your goodness, let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for this day and always for the opportunity to come together and to be with one another here in your sanctuary. Truly, it is a place where our spirits are lifted, our hearts are comforted, and our spirits are strengthened for the journey that is before us. We give you thanks for the love that we share with one another and our love for you that makes it possible for us to be a vibrant presence, a light, a beacon of hope in this community and beyond. Lord God, in these troubled times, we know how much our Lord needs us to follow him. And so we pray that when we have sung our last hymn and we've said our final amens, that wherever life's journey may take us, we will find opportunities to be his voice and his hands in this world around us, using the gifts that you have given us to serve. All this we ask in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the letter of James, the second chapter, beginning with the 14th verse. James writes these words. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled. Without giving them the things they need for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown that faith apart from works is useless? 
Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness and he was called a friend of God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, our mouths this morning and the meditation of all of our hearts upon the sacred scriptures be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and always our Redeemer. Amen. So as we said during the announcements, this is a special Sunday, indeed a special month. We are celebrating our neighbors next door, the food pantry. And when it opened in August of 2020, we were just at the very beginning of the pandemic. We weren't even back to having services here in the sanctuary. So we had all of these celebrations planned, which we really couldn't do then. So we want to do it at least in part this morning. And to help us do that, I'm going to call upon Ellen McClansky to come forward and also uh, Stacy DiCarlo. And as they're coming forward, I can tell you that Ellen was at that time the president of Christian Community Service, and Stacy is now on the board of the Christian Community Service. And CCS, as it's commonly known, is the organization that runs the uh, food pantry. And so, Ellen, maybe you can refresh all of our memories. How did the idea of a food pantry next door come about? Well, it started as a, a pipe dream that I had for a long time. But we, in, I think it was in 2017, we had, a, uh, we had Nancy Parsons come to a board, we had a board retreat basically, and for brainstorming and Nancy, to see the big picture, and just Nancy is really good at that kind of thing. And um, so we came up with a few ideas and, and a, a new home was, was on top of my list. Yeah. I, did, I did have to convince a few other board sure. members, but I worked mm -hmm. on that. But, and then um, in, I'm not sure when it happened that the, celebration for the 300th anniversary of the church came along and Nancy was chairing that committee and said, I think it would be a great idea if the annex could be gotten, changed from being storage to being the new food pantry. And um, Absolutely. And it's perfect. I can remember, <laughs> absolutely. And I can remember that first meeting of the 300th anniversary committee and Nancy Parsons sat down and the first thing she said was, I don't want our 300th anniversary to be a stroll down memory lane where we pull out old photo albums and say, gee, do you remember when? She said, I want our 300th anniversary to be a celebration of this church's vital part of this community. And that came uh, to being with the decision to, if you will, make a gift to the community of whole of the old annex, which many of us know was pretty run down at the time. And in order to make this reality uh, come to pass, we had to do a uh, capital campaign, and Stacy was very involved in that. Maybe you can tell us what we had to do and, and how it all went. Sure. So as you know, the annex required a lot of renovations, uh, down to the studs, plumbing, electrical, and uh, we also knew that we wanted to be ADA compliant, accessible, uh, energy efficient. So we put together, people, not me, put together a, a budget of how much it was going to cost, and we needed to raise $220,000 to make this happen. Um, because the North Reading community is so generous, uh, the people and the businesses, especially a lot of people right in this congregation, we were able to raise $250,000 for the project. Um, so that funded the full renovation, as well as um, some ongoing building costs and overhead. That's right, yeah. And I do know that it was a joint venture between the church and the community. You mentioned 250,000 and 70,000 of that came from organizations and individuals within our congregation. And uh, so 
the food pantry opened beginning of August, and Ellen, maybe since you were very involved at that point, uh, you can tell us where the food pantry was before they moved next door and some of the limitations. Oh, the, well, we were in Town Hall, in which had been a school once upon a time, so the pantry was in the what had been the stage um, of the, the and We room, have a few pictures. Uh, of the um, building. Oh, yeah. Mm. It was very crowded. We didn't have a lot of space. I think it was 700 and something square feet. No windows. Five steps up, whether you went in through the gym or whether you went from outside. Those are the steps the there. Oh, it was, it was just charming on every <laughs> level. Um, which, which made it difficult for uh, clients with special needs. Right. There was no, right. We could get people into the gym, but they couldn't get into the pantry to shop or do anything. Never mind the mm -hmm. thousands of pounds of food that we were bringing in. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, so some of the advantages of the new food pantry you've alluded to, it's handicap accessible. It's accessible. It, uh, yep. it's, um, how many square feet? I'm trying to remember. Do you remember how many square feet we have over there now? It's, it's at least triple, I think. Isn't I think it like 2100? Is, we, we have a second story over there where we can store things. We have a dumb waiter there. Yep. We have. There are windows in the building. It's amazing. It's, um, it's nice and cheery. It's very cheery. This is an office that if, you, if a client wants to talk to someone about something confidential, there's a private space to do that. It's really a, a, yeah, a fantastic building. When you were at the town hall, you used to set things up in the gym, we and then set, you'd have yeah. to close it up afterwards and everything, mm -hmm. and now you have a space that is 100 percent yours yes that's that's the biggest that's absolutely, the biggest thing. absolutely yes and so we have the new uh, food pantry over there and what are some of the benefits now that we didn't have before so one of the uh, important things that we have now is a walk-in freezer and that's important because a lot of the the food that we get from the Greater Boston Food Bank is fresh and frozen foods, and we did not have enough storage for that before. So now we're able to, to get, we get about 40% of our food from them. We have volunteers that go down and uh, using the food pantry truck, they collect the food a few times a month, and, and now we have room to accept more food and then in turn give out more. So it's allowed you to expand the offerings okay. to the um, to clients. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, the food pantry is run by Christian Community Service. Ellen was the uh, president of that, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about the history of CCS. Oh, well, it's an all-volunteer organization, always has been. It was started in 1974 uh, with members from this church, Lois yeah. McKenzie, I think Effie Gaw. Effie Gaw. Was, um, yeah, I was, I, now my mind is blank. I didn't look up everybody's I know, we don't name, want to miss anybody, but, but a lot of people. Um, a lot of people, and it was primarily to be a single space where people in need could get help. So I think if, if someone went to a clergy person, the clergy would say, call Christian Community Service and they can help you out. And it was helping with emergency things from rent or medical bills or a car that wasn't running. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, that kind of thing. And then in the 90s, the food pantry started, and the, the, the rule now is that if someone does need financial help, they um, have to use the pantry, too, so that we know they're saving a little bit of, or a lot of money, yeah. um, on groceries and can use that money to help pay the rent or whatever it is that, that's mm -hmm. holding them back. Yeah. So um, it's... Supported by the churches as well as donations from the community, mm -hmm. and I think this is a big uh, part of uh, neighbor helping neighbors, which the transcript runs right. every Christmas. Right, that's time. that's the biggest um, fundraiser yeah. of the year. And times have changed. We have you. Know, we have a Facebook page. We have yeah. a website. Mm -hmm. um, there's we, there's a much easier way to get information to everyone who requests it than than what we had in the 70s. So. Yeah. And because this is a fairly affluent community, I mean, it's obviously not a Wellesley or a Newton or a Brookline, but it's an affluent community, as the communities around us are. Sometimes people think that there really isn't a big need for something like a food pantry or help with 
like a medical bill, and maybe you could tell us a little bit about sure. how many people are served and what. Yeah, thank you for, for mentioning that because it, North Reading is a, a wonderful community with the ability to be generous, um, and that's important because we, we do serve about 100 families regularly at wow. the pantry. So that includes um, families with small children, people who have recently lost their job, uh, and a lot of senior citizens also. Absolutely. and. Uh, when did the food, oh, you mentioned that, the food pantry opened when? It was in the early 90s, and that was a result of the post office food drive, which is a national event on the second Saturday in May. And um, so I think they called Lois McKenzie and said, we've got this food, <laughs> what do we do with it now? So that's when the pantry started. Um, and that's in May, usually. It's in May. Yeah. Yep. And just a heads up to everyone, we've been talking with the Christian Community Service, and now that the food pantry is located next door. The food comes in, non-perishables, on a Saturday. So the Sunday after that food drive, everybody here is going to help sort and bring it all over, and many hands make light work. How often can someone use the food pantry? So the food pantry is open on every Monday morning from 9.30 to 11, and then the first and third Mondays from 6.30 to 8 p.m. And clients are welcome to use the pantry twice per month. They can come in and, and shop freely like a grocery store. And uh, the, the amount that they take is limited to their family size. And CCS does a number of other things. One is take a tag. And Ellen, I know you and your daughters also mm -hmm. very involved in that yeah. for a number of years. Yeah. And that's going to be starting up in just a couple of weeks, I'm guessing. Uh, well, yes. In fact, yes. In fact, it started. We get a, a list for all of the, of the children. The, someone in the mm -hmm. pantry talks to someone about what the children's needs are as a form to fill out. They do that in September. And um, by, by Veterans Day, I think, the tags are all ready. And there are tags that go to the post office um, that say what each child wants. There are several items, several items of clothing, a few wish list items. Um, mm -hmm. yep. and, yeah, there are tags. There are some tags that come to this church and to Aldersgate, Absolutely. and also at the post office. The, the I don't know if it's good news or bad news for the, <laughs> but it's the number of children has decreased substantially uh, over mm -hmm. the years. So, yep. um, and people do love to give a gift to a child who mm -hmm. is local and that they know it's staying in the community. So. Um, so stay, stay tuned because in the next few weeks the outreach ministry will be having the tags mm -hmm. for people to pick up. Right. And because we were in the middle of the pandemic, we couldn't really celebrate the opening. One of the things that we did back then is we decided that we were going to do a special food offering for the food pantry as a welcome housewarming gift, if you will, and also in celebration of our 300th anniversary. And so the goal was to collect from the congregation 301 boxes of cereal, and we actually exceeded that. We ended up with 457 boxes of cereal. And uh, as I said, no one was in the sanctuary at that time, and so we just kept putting them up there every Sunday, and we did the, uh, the live stream. So this month, obviously November, Thanksgiving, uh, we want to do a month-long special food drive for the pantry, and there was something in the Hilltop News. I'm not sure if that needs to be updated, so I'm going to let Stacy. Sure. So thank you so much. The, the cereal drive was so successful that the food pantry would really appreciate that same donation again this year. Um, I think during Thanksgiving time, it's natural for everyone to want to give cranberry sauce and gravy. And while that is important, um, people are hungry in the community year round. And cereal tends to be an expensive item um, that everyone can use. And so those donations will be greatly appreciated again. And also, we have a need for um, jarred spaghetti sauce. That's another yeah. Yeah. Uh, slightly higher ticket item that can be used year round. Yeah. We have the storage space at the new pantry now, and so donations of mm -hmm. cereal and jarred spaghetti sauce would be 
greatly appreciate it. And there is a food pantry bin out in Putnam Hall that's going to be there now. Uh, so it's front and center and much more visible and we'll be able to receive it. donations of the cereal and the jarred spaghetti sauce, jarred spaghetti sauce mm -hmm. uh, on Sunday mornings or any time during the week when the office is over. And then the last thing is when the food pantry opened, we were planning to have an open house and we couldn't do that. And so we're going to do that this morning, I believe, we'll Ellen. We'll do that today. You're all welcome to go take a look at the pantry, check it out. If Dave McLaughlin happens to come to the event, please say thank you to him. He has done a huge right. amount of work from the, from the very beginning and um, we should thank him for that. So it is, um, yeah. And there will be members there over will there. Be, from, be, yep. Yes, there will be um, someone who can answer questions. Church members who are also members um, of yep. the volunteers yep. at, the, at the pantry yep. can show you around. Yep. You're going to love it. Yep. Go uh, Bonnie it Wallace out. is on the board. I know uh, Chris Page is mm -hmm. a volunteer. Mike mm -hmm. Blanchett. And I know there are others. My apologies mm -hmm. if I have missed anyone. But I thank you both for taking a moment to bring us up to date and, and help us to really celebrate what we've kind of wanted to do for the last couple of years. So God Thank bless you and all you. of your ministries. Thank you. Thank you. As we celebrate our new neighbors, it is fitting that we do so on a Sunday where we gather around the Lord's table to know him in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. The table that we celebrate is open. Therefore, all who wish to know the risen Christ are welcome. So I invite you now to prepare your hearts for all things have been made ready.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have created the heavens and the earth, giving breath to every living thing. So we thank you for all the gifts of creation and for the gift of life itself. We are humbled that you have made us in your own divine image and that you continue to reach out to us in love even when we act as though you have no claim upon us. As we gather around this table, we rejoice in Jesus Christ, the only one eternally begotten of you, who was born of your servant Mary and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. Together we celebrate Christ's resurrection and we await his return at the end of time. Until then, we ask you to send your spirit upon this bread and this cup. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at the table, that our eyes may be opened and we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst, in each other, and in all for whom he died. Amen. On that sacred night long ago, while at the table with his disciples, Jesus took the bread. After he blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, all of you, for this is my body broken for you. Ministering to you in his name, we give you this bread.
Let us eat of the bread, and may the spirit of love that was in him be in us also. In like manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, drink, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant, and poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Ministering to you in his name, we give you this cup.
us drink of the cup and rejoice in the gift of eternal salvation. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have called us to your table and granted us the presence of the living Christ. As you have strengthened our faith and our love for one another, send us forth now into the world in courage and in peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. For we ask it in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. People of God, our service of worship has ended. Let us prepare to go forth wherever we may be to continue our service of love, knowing that our God goes before us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit, be upon you all. Amen. Amen.